Welcome, this is now question number three for um, Evexcel's M1 June 2015 paper. So, this question is equilibrium question. Now, what I've drawn here is a free force um, diagram. So, basically, what we've got here is uh, the original diagram given on the paper. So, uh, what we've got here is we've got two points. We've got P and Q. Uh, and the... The angle that the thread makes with the um, roof is 35 degrees at Q and 55 degrees at P. Now, what we need to do, obviously these ropes have a horizontal and a vertical component. Now, they are suspending a 2 kilogram mass. So remember, that's mass, not weight. So that's why on this free force diagram, which is where we resolve the forces um, in terms of all the ones that are pulling it down, all the ones that are pulling it up, all the ones that are left and right. Now, we're told this is an equilibrium, so obviously all the force is going to be balanced. So it's two kilograms, the weight of that, the, the mass is not a force, remember? The only force that has to do with mass is weight, and weight is equal to mass times the gravitational field strength, or 9.81. So, how do we resolve the rest of the forces? Because there's no direct force pulling it up, it's these are an angle, yes, but we said they have horizontal and vertical components. So the first thing we're going to draw is this imaginary thread. So if we got rid of these two, obviously it would fall. But if we combine these two to have some kind of horizontal, uh, vertical approach in terms of resolving the weight, it looks something like this. Just a dotted line, straight up. Okay, and we can split that up into two right angle triangles. So, put a little right angle here, little right angle here. Now, obviously you don't need to be a genius to work out, total is 180. So, either side, so therefore this is going to be 55 degrees, and the other side is going to be 35 degrees. Okay. And, therefore, we, what I would personally recommend you do is draw another little right hand angle, di right angle diagram on either side, such as this, going up to Q, with angles here, right angles there. Now, um, see that's not perfect, I'm sure that's quite bad. Uh, shows that I can't draw, but never mind. Um, so obviously, you know, angles, right angles add to 90, so therefore you can draw this other little angle on, which becomes 35, and then this other angle here, which becomes 55. Now, if you were being pedantic, you could draw little angles here and here, but I'm not going to be bothered about that. Okay, so that's, all I've done is express the information that we currently know, and then just added the logic to it. Okay, so we've got this dotted line that represents the horizontal, the vertical force and the horizontal forces. I'm going to focus on the vertical ones. Now, obviously, we've got the weight that's acting down, so that's our first port of call. That's what you should draw on first. Now, the vertical force is not just one tension. So, if we call P to Q, uh, sorry, yeah, sorry. The first question says find the tension in the cable P to R. R being where this is suspended. And I'm going to call this T, so P to R, that tension, I'm going to call T1, and P to uh, R to Q, I'm going to call it tension T2. Okay. Now, using that as a right angle triangle, what we've got here is um, the force that's pulling it right, so the horizontal force on the right hand side is this red dotted line here. And to get to that, you would do T2 times the angle. And because it's, we're looking at the adjacent to angle and the hypotenuse, we obviously use uh, cos. So it's T2 times cos 35 is what is pulling it um, right. Okay. Similarly, what's pulling it left? Well, um, that's T1 times cos 55, because it's still an adjacent and a hypotenuse, but we're looking at the left-hand side of this little triangle. So what's pulling it left is T1 times cos 55. Okay. Now, for resolving the horizontal forces, we can either look at this direct one up here and work out the two uh, tensions on that, or what we can do is, um, sorry, I'm just a popular guy, look at the horizontal parts here and here and add them together. So that's what we're going to do. So, assuming our right angle triangle hypotenuse of T1 uh, and T2, we're going to look at the uh, vertical forces, the vertical components. So, it's that hypotenuse and the opposite, so we use sine, so it's T2 times sine um, 35 plus, this is the key bit, because we've got two 
tensions and they both have a vertical force and they're both pulling it upwards, obviously not pushing it down, therefore you add them together. So that's the first vertical component. The second vertical component comes on T1. And similarly we have T1 times the, the uh, sine of the angle uh, to get the, op uh, the opposite angle. So it's T2 times, si sorry, T1 times sine 55. Okay, so there we are. That's our free force um, diagram. Just have to excuse me a second uh, while I pull my computer in. So what I've drawn there is a um, a free force diagram. So as I said, what I mean by that is I've just resolved the forces for you. Okay, we've summed up the forces uh, just there. So we can come up with a couple of equations from this that will allow us to work out what T1 is. Now remember, for part A, we're asked to work out what uh, the tension in the line, in the uh, thread or whatever, from P to R is. So essentially T1. Right. So what we can do here is now we know all these are equal. So we know 2 times 9.8 is equal to T2 times sine 35 plus T1 times sine 55. We also know, uh, sorry, just to come off. Careful, I'm just giving myself a drink. So uh, don't worry, it's uh, just soft. <laughs> T1 times uh, cos 55 is equal to T2 times cos 35. Now, first of all, what we need to do is establish a... Um, so if we write these two equations down and see where we can go from them. So the first one that I said was the vertical forces are equal. So we could do uh, 2 times 9.8, which is obviously 19.6. But I'm just going to actually change my mind. Leave, leave it as 2 kilograms times 9.8, which obviously you know is 19.6, is equal to T2 times sine 35 plus uh, T1 times sine 55. Okay? Right, so that's the first equation. Our second equation is a lot easier. Um, so it's T1 times cos 35 sorry, cos 55 is equal to T2 times cos 35. Okay, so what we want to do is find out what T1 is. Now, it's very tempting straight away to go, okay, well, T1 times cos 35, sorry, 55, it's got a 5 in it anyway, is equal to uh, T2 times cos 35. Rearrange that and we can get uh, T1 to be the subject, but we don't know what T2 is, so that's kind of pointless. However, going out, if we look at this equation, try and get um, T1 to be the subject, we still don't know what T2 is. So clearly what we need to do is we've got two equations here with two unknowns, so it's simultaneous equations, but which one, so there's a couple of options we can cancel out, rearrange or substitute. I guess then the last two are kind of the same thing. Okay, so clearly the easier one that is going to be uh, easier to rearrange is number two. Okay, so I said we really need to get T1. However, what we actually want is to get rid of T2. So we're just left with T1. Uh, when I say T1, T2, so T2 is R to Q tension and T1 is P to R tension, remember. Or the other way around in terms of T. T1 is R to P or P to R, whichever way you want to think of it. Okay, so... What I'm going to do is actually rearrange this to get T2 as a subject. So basically what we do is to divide both sides by cos 35. So T2 is equal to T1 times cos 55 over uh, cos 35. Now, all we do is substitute this value for T2 into this equation where we see T2. Now obviously we only see it once, but this may cause some confusion, but just go with it and I'll explain what to miss, what to watch out for. Now what I'm going to do is simply um, calculate what 2 times 9.8 is, because we've shown that's where we've got it from, so you don't need to keep rewriting that bit, um, otherwise, uh, because you'd probably end up in a bit of a mess. So obviously 2 times 9.8 is 19.6, uh, that's equal to T2 times sine 35. Now, you'll notice here, it'd be nice, it would be very nice indeed if this... T2 would rearrange to um, T1 times cos 55 over sine 35, but it doesn't. So what we actually end up doing 
So I'm just going to write this block in into here, when I say block, the rearrange for T2, and not simplify anything just yet, but obviously you can if you want to. So T2, we said T1 times cos 55 over cos 35, so if we put that in, T1 times uh, cos 55 over cos 35 times sine 35. And we'll expand that out in a minute. Well, actually, you could go straight, actually, I will sort of expand it out. So you go straight to doing this. Because it's times sine 35, you just put sine 35 on the top. Okay, so times sine 35. Plus, I mean, this doesn't change, it's still T1 times sine 55. Okay, so what you'll notice, you should remember an identity uh, from C2. M on you. Um, you should remember this C2 identity if you've not done it. Oh, C C1 identity actually, I think. Uh, where sine over cos is ta. Probably C2. There's some good juice. So sine over tan is uh, sine over cos is tan. Now we can't do obviously cos 55 over cos 35. One because they're totally different angles. But we can do sine 35 over cos 35 because the angle is the same. So it's a sine x. If you let x be 35 degrees, that'll be sine x over cos x, which is tan x. So that's tan 35 degrees. But we've still got this t1 times cos 55 business, which doesn't change. So it's still. Uh, but we do get rid of this cos 35, if you can imagine. So what essentially happens is this becomes, sorry, I'm trying to um, sit on the chair now, but we'll see on purpose. Um, so T1 times cos 55 times tan 35. Okay, you can bracket all that off if you want to. Plus T1 times sine 55. Okay, so... Hopefully you can see um, where we've got that from. Let me just go back to my invaluable little sheet before I make any uh, little colossal mess of something. Um, okay, so hopefully you've got that. Now, so, yeah, sign 55. Now what you've noticed here is we've got, uh, well, obviously I didn't straight away then, because I've done this a while ago. Um, what we've got here is we've got T1 times a few other factors plus T1 times something else. So essentially what we can do is we can take T1 out as a common factor. So we write this equation, so 19.6 equals T1 uh, brackets cos 55 times tan 35 plus sine 55. That's all times by T. Now we've got T1 times all these trig functions um, is equal to 19.6. So it's just a case now of rearranging this. Okay, so T1 is equal to 19.6 over all this mess of a function, so over cos 55 times tan 35 plus sine 55. Okay, so that's T1, and you should get an answer for T1 to be equal to uh, 16.055 newtons or 16.1 newtons. Okay, so that's what T1 is. Okay, so that's P2R, so that's part A done. Now, it doesn't give specific, um, marks for each question this is just it's just part i and part i i okay so there's several marks for both parts so you could have either done that in terms of rearranging to get what t2 is at that stage which obviously we'll come on to a minute and do the same method but get an answer for t1 uh, for t2 and sub it into something that you can work out to get t1 okay so i just chose to rearrange to get to t1 you could have chose to rearrange to get to t2 so if you were to do that, then you would get a formula for T1. So T1 would be T2 times cos 35 over cos 55. Subbed it in to here, rearranged it like we've done here, except instead of taking T1 out as a common factor, obviously you would have taken T2 out as a common factor um, and simplified and therefore got an answer for T2. But either way, you would be, end up with a tension.
Okay. Now, in part A, it asks you for PR, or T1 as we've called it. So, that's why I've done T1 first. Okay. What it asks you for in part B, uh, part I, I, uh, is tension in the string Q, R, or in other words, T2. Now, we've got this equation up here. The second equation, which says T1 times cos 55 is equal to T2 times cos 35. Now, um, what is a simple case of putting in 16.1 into that equation for T1? So, it's all 16.055, or just get an, keep your answer for this equation in your calculator and sub it into the second one. So, 16.055 times cos um, 55 is equal to T2 times cos 35. So, you just divide both sides by cos 35. So, that is over cos 35. And that is equal to T2, which is P. Uh, RQ, sorry, or QR, and you get a value for QR is equal to 11.2 newtons. Okay. Right. What key thing here is, um, well, I'm sure it's so key actually. Um, Okay, so that's the main bit. As I said, you could have done it the other way around, but you would have needed to figure out what T1 is for part A anyway. So I would have personally done it that way around. Um, Alright, so hopefully that's made some kind of sense there. Um, as I said, if you've got any other ways of approaching that question, please do let me know. But that is one of the recommended ways, um, and I think it's the easiest, uh, definitely. Okay, so... Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next question. Or video, or whatever you decide to put yourself through.